Chris in Oklahoma writes to me, Hi, Paul. Hey, Chris. What's your take on the whole notion of an amplifier having better pace, rhythm, and timing versus another amplifier? In your opinion, are these differences real? And what exactly are these differences uh, in the DAX, uh, in the amps architecture? And how do you attribute such differences to Pratt? So Pratt is our, I think it's a British term. I think the British came up with it first, pace, rhythm, and timing. And yeah, I think amplifiers, DAX, preamplifiers, all have a bit of Pratt qualities to them. So w what does that actually mean though? And, and how do we control that? Well, the easiest way to explain all of that is how emotionally engaging is a particular piece of gear. We know without question that music has the ability to release endorphins in us. All of us have no doubt had the experience where you hear a certain piece of music and it sends a chill down you. It sends, a, a, you know, you, you get like, oh, wow, you, you connect with that music. We all know that. I mean, it's, it's happened, whether it's a nursery rhyme or it's, it's you know, a, a Beethoven's Fifth, whatever it is, we've all had that experience. In fact, there's a whole bunch of study going on now about the power, the healing powers of music. And they're using music to release endorphins in people that are, are troubled, that, that have, instead of giving them a pill, they, they use music now to, uh, ex to, to open up areas of the brain and make connections and all this kind of good stuff. And we don't really know why that all is, but, and I certainly don't intend to try and even speculate why, but I do know it's true. So we, we know that music emotionally connects. And we also know that sonically, various pieces of equipment connect us more and connect us less. What we have, and I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I see it all the time. When, when the guys bring up a new piece of gear for me to audition, I'll sit up here and listen and yeah, the music's gone and then we'll make the change and I'm like, whoa. Part of that, whoa, you know, I can point to it's better clarity, it's, the, you know, I'm, it's, I'm engaged. All of a sudden I am more emotionally connected to that music and that is what we're talking about. And we can say, well, this particular, you know, I'm not gonna start my foot tapping on a Beethoven sonata, um, but with the right kind of music, my foot will tap more or less, depending on the level of engagement that I have with the music. So that's what it's all about. And the things that make me more or less engaged, well, I could go on for hours about various circuit topologies and things, the use of less feedback, the, the synergy between components, whether it's FETs and bipolars. I, I, I've been yapping for a while now on the upcoming series of books that I have, a 10, a ten book series on the Audiophiles Guide. And I have nine finished. The last one was home theater. And how to, you know, building a home theater for, for an audiophile person. With, and I think it's going to be a fun book. The last book, I had a whole list of items. You know, I've done the subwoofer, headphones, digital, analog, all of that. And I decided, you know what? Given my advanced age, and this will no doubt probably be the last thing I do like this in this audiophile's guide, I mean, it's a lot of work writing 10 whole books. I thought, you know what? Why don't I just put it out there? Maybe make the last book exactly this, writing about circuitry, how it works, why it works. And this may be too way too nerding out for a whole bunch of people, but for some folks, 
I want to leave a legacy of what I've learned over 50 years about circuits, why this works, why this doesn't work, how this works, how that works. And I, I think I've convinced myself it's a huge, hard project and it opens me to a ton of ridicule. But at 76 years old, I don't give a flying f There you go. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.